Well, welcome again to our traditional online service, which is representative of St Peter's and St Paul's Anglican Church, Milton, and St Martin's Anglican Church, Oladulla. It's great that you could be with us again, and we thank you for your patience as we continue to bring our traditional, the online service to you. Uh, in time, we do look to come back, but um, it's the 10.30 service that's coming back first, on the 1st of November, but I feel quietly confident that there might be something in December. That's only my opinion, and it requires a few other opinions before that would ever be the case. Um, today we continue in our Luke series, and again we've got our Assistant Minister Dave with us, and he's going to open up a passage which is very, very familiar, but uh, of course when we do go back to the scriptures that we know well, there's always new things that we learn. So we look forward to David unpacking that uh, a little later on for us as God uses him to speak to us. I'm going to pray before we sing, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this great day. Uh, thank you for the way that you've blessed our uh, community with the holiday makers who have kind of played an important part of trying to keep people employed by purchasing things in our local area. And so we thank you for that. Uh, thank you that you've given them safe journey home as well. And we look forward to them coming back in due course during other holiday periods. But for our people locally, uh, we pray that you continue to sustain them. We pray too that we would be people in this community who would continue serving you uh, in just the way we live our life. So people know that we are followers of you, but we're not hitting people over the head. We're just engaging people, loving them, caring for them, but just doing it as Jesus would do. We pray that that would have a great result in their life. For those of us who are listening now, who are part of our service or know Jesus fully, we we pray, Lord, that uh, you would be with us throughout this entire service. Uh, this is all about you. It's never about us. Though there are many links in the chain that play a part to make the service happen, your spirit is working through every one of us uh, in order to give you all the praise. And we pray, Lord, that you would be pleased with the way we go about doing that as your spirit indwells us and points us to you. So we ask for your help as you are present with us for your glory. Amen. Well, let's stand and sing our opening hymn, The Servant King. Thanks, Alan. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our world, your glory veiled. Not to be served, but to and give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. of tears my heavy load he chose to bear his heart with sorrow was torn yet not my will but yours he said this is our God the servant king he calls us now to follow him to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Come see his hands and his feet, the scars that speak of sacrifice, hands that flung stars into space. To cruel nails surrendered This is our God, the servant king He calls us now to follow him To bring our lives as a daily offering Of worship to the servant king to serve and in our lives 
lives enthrone him, each other's needs to prefer. For it is Christ we're serving, this is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the newborn king. Worship to the newborn king, the servant king. Very, very important. Well, our service today is a communion service, uh, HC1, as we would tag it here, uh, from an Australian prayer book, the First Order. And so uh, if you haven't got your juice and, uh, or wine and bread together at any time through the service, just be aware that you can pause it, uh, get your gear together, and then be ready to... Um, participate in the Lord's Supper a little later on. Well, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Our sentence of scripture this morning comes from Psalm 130. Sorry, Psalm 17. We call upon you, Lord, for you answer us. Incline your ear to us. Hear our words. Keep us at the ap as the apple of the eye. Hide us in the shadow of your wings. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Of course, in summarising all the law and the prophets, our Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write your law in our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Our collect today, or prayer, will appear on the screen, and I invite you to join in after the brackets. Let us pray for the gift of joy in our service of God and man. Almighty and ever-living God, our source of power and inspiration, give us strength and joy in serving you as followers of Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Just some brief notices to bring to you. Noticing there's a, an article there about two habits of successful parents, which will uh, engage people, parents in particular. Uh, note about the quarterly rosters, uh, they're being finalised. And so there's a note there from the office regarding uh, 1030 church members and the traditional online church members as well. So uh, please follow those details if you can help out in any way. And there's an update there about the parish directory, which takes a lot to organise, but people have been responding really well and we're encouraged by that. So please uh, read that and uh, respond where appropriate as well. Um, we have noted already the 1030 church is aiming to come back on the 1st of November and uh, the wardens and the 1030 ministry team are working at making sure all the checks and balances are done um, because this is a COVID safe property and so there and there's a training day that's involved in that as well um, there is a job vacancy coming this is an important one it's coming up in the school bernie hughes who has been teaching school scripture kind of three four days a week for some 20 odd years is now retiring from, or from that position to do something else and so as a result um, you've got three weeks if you if you know anyone who might be the right person for this job and so the details are inside the wavelength there it's an SRE teacher in Ulladulla High School but the deadline is Saturday the 7th of November for applications so if you know anyone whom God is leading you to mention it to because they might be the right person for the role 
or just to inquire about it, then I'd, I'd act very quickly as well. Of course, there's our songs for the week. There's our diocesan and prayer for the week and Bible readings and these prayer points in our wavelength as well. So we encourage you to actually read those, pray about those things and listen and act upon the notices in the wavelength where it's um, the right thing for you to do. All right, uh, we're going to move on to our readings, and this is the, this is where we start to get into the juicier part of the service, the readings, uh, and then we have the word explained to us as well. And so we're going to read to read uh, Psalm 96. Now I want to point something out because in some feedback from people watching, where we where there's uh, a response from you guys out there. Um, Sometimes, for some people, because of eyesight or size of screen, what is on the screen for the response isn't always easy for some people. And that's just the situation they might be in. So, as a result, we were talking with someone during last week. Uh, we have decided to, that when, the psalm, when I say the first part of the psalm verse, I then repeat the second one. Because they're getting muffled sounds. And so what I'm going to say to our guys here... For the benefit of the few people that might struggle to actually hear, um, the pressure's now on me to, <laughs> to actually not get it wrong um, and just speak so they can hear if, if they can't see properly on the screen um, because of uh, the size of the TV or whatever it might be. So this is uh, for the benefit of our brothers and sisters who might struggle. So Psalm 96. I sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his holy name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are mere idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Majesty and glory are before him. Beauty and power are in his sanctuary. Render to the Lord, you families of the nations. Render to the Lord glory and might. Render to the Lord the honour due to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. I worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Say among the nations that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it can never be moved, and he shall judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Let the fields rejoice, and everything in them. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout with joy before the Lord. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. The next three readings are brought to us by Gary. Gary Dillon. Good to see you back, brother, after your operation. And your gait is getting better. For those in the uh, service who will know what I'm talking about. Well, <coughs> good morning, everybody. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 uh, reminds us that all scripture is God-breathed and that it's good for us. It shapes us and mould us, moulds us into the image of God's Son, the Lord Jesus. I'm going to be reading from the NIV. That mightn't be exactly what it is up on the screen behind me. Um, but if you've got an NIV, you might want to get it out. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 verses 1 to 6. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of, <clears throat> to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armour and to open doors before him, so that gates will, <clears throat> will not be shut. I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that <coughs> I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. 
For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name <coughs> and bestow on you a little honour, though you do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, <coughs> though you have not acknowledged me. So that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, men may know there is, no, uh, there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Our second reading <coughs> is from uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 1 to 5. Paul, Silas and Timothy to the church of the Thess Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you. We always thank you for all of you mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, <coughs> loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. And our third and final reading that our Gospel reading from, uh, from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. This is Zacchaeus, the tax collector. But Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. And Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abram. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. This is the word of God. Always good to hear the word, isn't it? Thanks, Gary. We're going to uh, say the nice thing crew together. What does that entail? Saying what you believe. If you believe what's in here, then say it with great joy. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It's now time for God's word. Thanks, Dave. Well, hello to 8.30, 11, 5.30 and any early rising 10.30ers. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, Bibles open, please, to the last Bible reading that uh, was read for us in Luke chapter 19. Let me pray. Well, Heavenly Father, pretty much every Sunday, we, with thousands of other churches, made up of hundreds of thousands of other, of Jesus' people, pray these words. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. By your spirit, Father, I pray that you will help us see what it looks like here from Luke 19. What your will for this world is. What the breaking in of your kingdom results in. And may we see more of that happening in this part of the world. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we've just had one of the most famous uh, parts of the Bible read for us. Um, it must be one of them, surely one of the most well-known stories. I just can't even remember the first time I heard it as a Sunday school kid. Um, and here we are. I reckon most of us who are looking at this and, and just heard it from Gary. We could say this verbatim from verse 1 to verse 10, get the events together. But friends, what we have here is more than a really, really well-known Bible story, one of the most famous ones, one of the most memorable ones. What we have here is what I just prayed at the start of my prayer. What we have is this is what God's kingdom has come to earth, what God's will for this world is. You see, if last week we had an eye test, this week we've got a template. We've got a template. Templates are used to show the shape, the outline, to give some particular form to a particular thing. Friends, what we have here is a template. It's a template for the key verse, which is in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. This template, what happens in the preceding verses, gives us the shape of what that looks like. As God's King brings God's kingdom to bear in this world. Well, friends, our first heading that we're looking at today is curious. The first thing we want to notice is, well, it's curious what happens, really. It's in verses 1 to 4. Well, the events follow pretty much straight after the events we looked at this last week. Jesus is now, he was on the outside of Jericho, he's now entered into Jericho. And he's going to meet someone there. And we kind of know the story already, but I want you to go back 40 years or 50 years or however many years it was when this particular character was born. You see, eight days into this character's life, we know him as Zacchaeus, his parents presented him for the rite of circumcision. They were doing in obedience what Jewish parents had done for 2,000 years or so, Presenting, dedicating, identifying their eight-day-old baby boy as a son of promise, 
a son of Abraham, to share in the promises through circumcision. And part of that, apart from the snip snip, was the naming of their son. Now, perhaps they poured over the baby name books for ages, discussing, oh, what's the right name for our boy? What should we call him? I mean, names are significant. And here where the name of this person is used so much, imagine being in that room that day. Name this child Zachai. The name means righteous one. Righteous one. I think we've got a bit of an idea of what that baby boy's parents would have liked to have seen their child grown up in to be, given the name that they gave him, an ancient ancestral Hebrew name that means righteous one. Well, fast forward, and any sentiment or any significant meaning his parents intended is long, long gone. The one named righteous one is anything but at the start of our story. You see, as Jesus comes into town, there was a man named, the man there by the name of righteous one. But he's anything but when we find out the first thing about him apart from what his name is. He is a chief tax collector and wealthy. You don't need me to go over how the chief tax collector becomes wealthy. Basically, it's extortion. Ripping off people. Yes, collecting the share of the government money on behalf of the Romans. He's a traitor. In this town, this guy is notorious. But for whatever reason, this chief tax collector who is wealthy and who seems to be the complete opposite of the rich young religious ruler we met a couple of weeks ago, has got a problem that his money can't solve because he's, verse 3, short. He wants to see Jesus. He's keen to see this one. We're not told why he wants to see Jesus, but because he's short, he's gets a plan and he does something which in the eyes of the crowd there would have been absolutely humiliating. He spies a sycamore tree and he makes a beeline for the sycamore tree and plants himself up in it. He's risking not just public humiliation but disgrace by running in public. And it's more than conduct unbecoming, more than the upper class aristocratic, oh, we just, these things just aren't done these way, these chaps. No, it really is scandalous, and it adds to what we're going to see is the pub, general public's general disgust of Zacchaeus. But you see, this template that Luke gives us draws from the stories that we've been looking at in chapter 18. You see, the word they use to describe Zacchaeus is short, actually can also mean immature, childlike. And here we see Zacchaeus acting in a very childlike way. Well, he gets up there, gets his perch. The next thing we see is what is necessary. The curious, wealthy chief tax collector sitting up in a tree, wanting to see Jesus finds out what is necessary. He finds out, and the crowd finds out. Jesus just goes straight to the point. Jesus, surrounded by the crowd, stops at the base of the tree, and much to, I guess, everybody, what will look like everybody's surprise, disgust, commands Zacchaeus, come down, Zacchaeus, I must... It is necessary that I stay at your house today. The last place anybody in Jericho would have expected Jesus to invite himself to is the house of the chief tax collector. Well, what's Zacchaeus going to do? What's he going to do? Well, 
He immediately responds to the invitation of Jesus. He comes down at once and he welcomes Jesus gladly. The the idea here is that, yes, come to my home. Now, when Jesus invites himself into Zacchaeus' home, he's actually offering relationship. I mean, think about it. Who do you have over for a meal? Do you invite any random off the street? Or do you tend to have your friends, those that you want to have close relationship with, get to know better? It's a no-brainer, isn't it? And in those days, it signifies important relationship. Now, it's not the first time that Jesus mixing with tax collectors has caught people grumbling. I mean, tax collectors figure six times in Luke's Gospel. And each time the crowd reaction to them is negative, where Jesus is welcoming. And Zacchaeus welcomes Jesus gladly, but the people in the crowd mutter. It's the same response back in chapter 15, just before Jesus gives the parable of the, of the shepherd seeking the sheep. In that run of three, lost and found, lost and found, lost and found parables. And the people are muttering because Jesus is associating with this with who they call the tax gatherers and sinners. And this crowd duplicates it. Notice it's not just some, it is all. All the people see what Jesus has done, inviting Zacchaeus, welcoming him. And Jesus and the crowd, as we're going to see, agree on Zacchaeus' status when it comes to being righteous. See, the crowd is right when they describe Zacchaeus. He is a sinner. A sinner curious to see Jesus, find out more about him. Jesus welcomes him, establishes a relationship with him. Well, change has happened. Zacchaeus is changed. You see, Zacchaeus' response to the crowd's complaint is actually met by a completely different person that we meet at the beginning of this episode. What he does shows a life radically changed by Jesus' impact in his life, welcoming him, opening up the door for a relationship with him. I wonder, friends, when we throw open the doors here, 1st of November, what's going to happen? We do know that a lot of extra people have been watching. They've been churching via YouTube. Far more people than we expect. And I wonder who some of these people are. I'm praying that they turn up. And I'm praying that whoever they are, they find here a church that is as welcoming to them as Jesus was to Zacchaeus. There's a challenge there for us there, isn't there? That's something that has jumped out at me from the text as an application at this time in our church life. Will we be welcoming for the sake of change, for the sake of someone coming to get to know the Lord Jesus? Well, Zacchaeus, the change is radical. Look, Lord, in response to the crowd's complaint. Here and now, I give half my possessions to the poor. Half of everything that he owns to the poor. And then as the chief tax collector, if I've cheated anybody out of anything, actually, the way this is said, if I have, actually, everybody knows I have, That's more the literal meaning here. Well, he offers to pay back four times. Now, let's compare Zacchaeus' reaction to the self-righteous 
Pharisee earlier in chapter 18, the one who boasted and bragged about his 10% offering. And the law, actually the Jewish law, which we take it Zacchaeus would have been well familiar with, well, restitution was only 20%, not 400%. Zacchaeus has got deep pockets, but even his deep pockets will send him to the brink of bankruptcy, we suspect. Remember the rich man who thought he... Well, at least he kept, he thought he kept at least half of the rules of God. He couldn't walk away from his money. It was too big a sacrifice. Zacchaeus, on the other hand, not just walks away, but is generous to a beyond imagination. I sometimes stop and think about this. It's part of the, the way that this this particular episode works. I mean, Zacchaeus is mentioned so many times that he's a chief tax collector is mentioned. Jericho is a major city. It wouldn't have been too hard for the original reader to go to the city of Jericho, knock on a few doors and go, hey, listen, look, I just read this. Is this actually, like, you've got to be, did this really happen? Actually, yeah, it did happen. I was actually one of the people that Zacchaeus ripped off. Look at this. Went and bought myself a new this or renovated the new that or whatever it was. A few doors down the street, knock, knock, knock again. It's the same story. The Zacchaeus Foundation. Feeding the homeless. Looking after victims of domestic blindness. Caring for the poor. Maybe a leper house. What made the change? Was it Zacchaeus' good deeds? Did Zacchaeus buy his way extravagantly into heaven? No. You see, what we have here is the template of change. What we see is what happens when Jesus, is, when Jesus, when someone submits to King Jesus' rule. And there is this change. Amazing change. Change that Jesus confirms in verse 9. The change has happened because salvation had come to this place. Jesus bought with him salvation. And the curious thing in Luke is that Luke has been keeping his powder dry on the use of this word ever since chapter 1. Chapter 1 in the Song of Zechariah. Remember last week? The same thing happened about the title, Son of David, the King, the long promised King. Well, here it is again. Here in the last episode of Jesus' three year ministry, the template of what his ministry is all about is salvation. You see, what's playing out in this story? is the prophecy three years earlier, sorry, 33 years or so earlier by Zechariah at the birth of his son, at the naming of his son. He says, this Jesus came into the world to give his people knowledge of salvation. How will they know they've got salvation? Because they know their sins are forgiven. How do sins get forgiven? What makes this forgiveness possible? Well, it's because of the tender mercy of our God, which breaks like dawn as the sun rises from the heavens, breaking upon, bringing new light, light into the life of those living in darkness. Make no mistake, Zacchaeus was wealthy, but he was an outcast in his society, treated with contempt as a traitor, in bed with the Romans. And the only people who would have been interested in him would have been his parents at a stretch and anybody who thought they could benefit from him. Zacchaeus was someone whose life was dark. The one 
named righteous one was anything but. But thanks to the salvation of the Lord Jesus, he moved from darkness to light, from the shadow of death into life. His feet guided into the way of peace as he sought peace with those that he had wronged. I've been reminded of this a lot lately, friends. Most of you know that most mornings I get up and I do a morning walk and I try and do it at dawn. And this was dawn on Friday and it just struck me. And I was preparing this talk and these verses from Zechariah came back to mind from the beginning of Luke's Gospel. And as I stood out there on the South Pacific Heathland overlooking South Rennie's Beach, and I noticed that the sun's light began to shine more and more on the swell and on the waves. I could feel its warmth. Last week I shared with you of 15, when I was 15 years old. That's when I became aware that I was someone who was lost. But thanks to Jesus, I was sought and found. For a lot of my, for, for many of those years, I thought I was okay, but I wasn't. But I was actually blind to the truth of how lost I was. Friends, here we have a template. This is a template of what Jesus is all about then and still today. You see, his mission is to bring salvation certainty for people to know for sure, no matter who they are, that even for Zacchaeus, even that which looks impossible through the eyes of a human being, thanks to Jesus, is possible. And that it is the gospel that not just saves us, thanks to our King, but it shapes us. Shapes us into people who should be sharing this more and more so that others may know King Jesus as we know him. I'm going to pray that happens and that that will change each of us. Because his mission is my mission. It must be your mission. as we go out with our Saviour and our King's commission to go out into this part of the world making disciples for his sake that they too may know salvation certainty. Heavenly Father, thank you for this story, this summary of what it is that King Jesus came to bring to this world. He who came to seek and save the lost. Father, help us to see more clearly how lost we are without Jesus. To grow our hearts in gratitude for his finding of us. May he continue to open our eyes to see what it is we can do as his people here in this town so that others may come to know him as we do. That, that we will be faithful bearers of his mission. Help us to do this, Lord, by your word, by your spirit, in your strength. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Thanks, Dave. We're now going to have a, a, a time where we sing and that will immediately be followed by our prayer time as well. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me Swift 
to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. You never change, O oh Lord, abide with me. I need your presence every passing hour. What but your grace can foil the tempter's power? Who, like yourself, my guide and strength can be? Through cloud and sunshine, Lord, abide with me. I have no fear with you at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death sting? Where grave your victory? I triumph still if you abide with me. Hold now your cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's faint shadows flee. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide with me. Our gracious Heavenly Father, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Maker and Redeemer, who was and is and is to come, we praise you and give you honour and thanks that you, the Most High God, allow us to come into relationship with you. You alone are worthy of our praise, Lord, and there is no other name in heaven or on earth by which we can be saved. Most merciful Father, we thank you for the atoning sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, who by very nature is God and who came and dwelt among, amongst us to free us from the shackles and the weight of our sin and bring us into an everlasting covenant with you. Thank you, Lord, for the beauty that surrounds us for the splendour of your creation and for everything good that you provide. We are so blessed to live in this beautiful part of the world. Please never let us take this privilege for granted. We thank you for the online services we have been able to enjoy during COVID-19 and now for the reopening of the 10.30 service in November. We pray for a renewed vigour and a deeper sense of commitment to our church and church family with these lifting of restrictions. Help us to be a beacon of light in our community. Whilst we have enjoyed relative freedom during COVID, we pray for those in Victoria, especially Melbourne, who have endured much greater struggles. We pray for those suffering isolation, loneliness, depression, abuse and financial hardship. Likewise, in other parts of the world, we pray for countries who do not have the resources to control this epidemic and countries where leaders refuse to recognise the gravity of the situation. We pray for upcoming elections in the US and we seek to see transparency and a leader with a genuine desire for truth and for political, economic and social justice for all. We pray for the persecuted church around the world. Please, Father, bring hope in their anguish and pain, hope in their despair, 
hope in their need and hunger and thirst, and hope in the hour of their death. We pray for our own church family too, Lord, for Ross and Leanne, Dave and Jane. Please give them wisdom, good health and insight to take us into an uncertain future. We pray for the elderly in our church, the sick, the grieving, the lonely, the overwhelmed and all who are struggling at this time. Please give them the peace that passes all understanding and guard our hearts and minds from all that is ungodly and true, untrue. And we ask all these things in your most holy name. Amen. Well, to conclude our prayer time, I'm going to pray our COVID prayer from the diocese regarding governing authorities. Lord of heaven and earth, give wisdom to all those in authority in every land. We pray especially for Queen Elizabeth and our Prime Minister Scott Morrison. We pray for Premier Gladys Berejiklian and local Mayor Amanda Findlay. Give them wisdom and wise counsel that they may lead our communities to respond to coronavirus outbreaks with calm and generosity. Assist them to govern for the good of all. Enable our leaders to properly resource and support police, ambulance and fire services in such a way that our communities maintain peace and safety. Amen. Well, as I highlighted earlier on, this is a community service and so we're going to participate in that now. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we who come to receive the Holy Communion of the body and blood of our Saviour Christ can come only because of his great love for us. For although we are completely undeserving of his love, yet in order to raise us from the darkness of death to everlasting life as God's sons and daughters, our Saviour Christ humbled himself to share our life and to die for us on the cross. In remembrance of his death and as a pledge of his love, he has instituted this holy sacrament which we are now to share. But those who would eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord must examine themselves and amend their lives. They must come with a penitent heart and steadfast faith. Above all, I must give thanks to God for his love towards us in Christ Jesus. You then who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen and comfort you. But first, let us make a humble confession of our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge with shame the sins we have committed by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for all our misdoings. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that from this time forward we may serve and please you in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of assurance for those who truly turn to Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our bounden duty 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, Holy Father, mighty creator and eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord Most High. Let us pray this prayer of humble access together. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and who instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, merciful Father, and grant that we who receive these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. who on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given you thanks he gave it to them saying drink from this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take note this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and always be thankful. Let us pray as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we heartily thank you that you graciously feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and assure us thereby of your favour and goodness towards us, and that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your eternal kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of your dear Son. And we humbly beseech you, Heavenly Father, so to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as you have prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we all honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And we're going to sing our final hymn for the day. And that is, May the Mind of Christ. Before I sing this song uh, this afternoon, this last song and lead us in it, I just want to say a couple of words about it. On Wednesday of this week, I had not long finished rehearsing the songs for today. Then my telephone rang and it was my daughters say that a dear aunt had just passed away. And I reflected on the words of this song in particular as I thought about Auntie. She was truly the most Christian woman I have ever known. And the words of this song fitted her perfectly. She was, and uh, listen to these words and take them in very carefully. May the mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day by his love and power controlling all I do and say. Everything that this lady did and said in her entire life came from Christ. She was a wonderful Christian witness. And I pray as we sing this song today that we can take that same mantle upon ourselves. May the mind of Christ my Saviour. Thanks, Gary. May the mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day by his love and power controlling all I do and say. May the word of God enrich me with his truth from hour to hour so that all may see I triumph only through his power. May the peace of God, my Father, in my life forever reign, that I may become to comfort those in grief and pain. May the love of Jesus fill me as the waters fill the sea. He makes all self abasing. This is victory. May his beauty rest upon me as I seek to make him known so that all may look to Jesus seeing him alone. Thank you, Alan. That concludes our service. So let's uh, go out with this blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming. We pray that God has spoken to you today through word and song and prayer and, and much, or, much more. And uh, we pray that he will bless you during this uh, coming week. Thanks for coming. We look forward to seeing you next week.